Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by. Welcome to the Fox Corporation Second Quarter 2021 Earnings Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session. I would like to emphasize that the functionality for the question and answer queue has recently changed. Instructions will be given at that time. If you should require assistance during the call, please press star then zero. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded. I'll now turn the conference over to Chief Investor Relations Officer and Executive Vice President of Corporate Initiatives, Mr. Joe Durego. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Operator. Good morning and welcome to our fiscal 2021 second quarter earnings call. Joining me on the call today are Lachlan Murdoch, Executive Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, John Nallen, Chief Operating Officer, and Steve Tomsick, our Chief Financial Officer. First, Lachlan and Steve will give some prepared remarks on the most recent quarter, and then we'll take questions from the investment community. Please note that this call may include forward-looking statements regarding Fox Corporation's financial performance and operating results. These statements are based on management's current expectations, and actual results could differ from what is stated as a result of certain factors identified on today's call and in the company's SEC filings. Additionally, this call will include certain non-GAAP financial measures included adjusted EBITDA, or EBITDA as we refer to it on this call. Reconciliations of non-GAAP financial measures are included in our earnings release and our SEC filings, which are both available in the Investor Relations section of our website. And with that, I'm pleased to turn the call over to Lachlan. Thanks, Joe. Uh, good morning, and thank you all for joining us to discuss our second quarter results. Financially and operationally, we continued our impressive results and strong momentum in the quarter, with EBITDA growing by 17%, driven by revenue growth of 8%. These financial results were led by exceptional gains in advertising revenues, which grew by 14%, spurred by a record political cycle in which we generated more than $420 million of net political revenue company-wide, during calendar 2020. The overall advertising strength was propelled by our Fox television stations, gains at Fox News Media, and the dramatic growth of Tubi. Beyond advertising, and because of the substantial pricing power of our brands, affiliate revenues grew by 6%, despite a reserve taken for potential distribution credits. While we experienced a decline in subscriber volume, the trend improved for the third consecutive quarter. This quarter, we saw industry subscribers decline just above 5%, which is more than a 50 basis point improvement from what we experienced in Q1. The financial performance of Fox is illustrative of the strength of the core brands that anchor our company and of the contributions of new assets that lay the groundwork for continued growth and rapid evolution. As you know, the news cycle over the last year has been quite active, and it has led directly to gains across our local stations, as well as all the networks and all the extensions of Fox News Media. For example, Fox's ability to provide the best in local news was on full display at Fox 5 Atlanta during the Georgia Senate runoffs. Not only did our colleagues at Fox 5 report on the national significance of the Georgia election, they also expanded news coverage in response to viewer demand, held a candidate debate, and produced special runoff programming focused on the issues impacting Georgia voters. During the entire runoff period, Fox 5 was the number one station in Atlanta for a six and a half hour morning news block. Hard work begets just awards, and so it's no surprise we led the market and political revenues generated. This success was replicated across the Fox television station's footprint. Net political revenue approximated $190 million in the quarter, bringing our total for the stations in the first half of the fiscal year to approximately $260 million, an amount more than three times greater than the last presidential cycle. The news cycle also continued to connect engaged audiences to the various Fox News media platforms, linear, digital, radio, and streaming, 
for news, analysis, and opinion. In fact, the Fox News Channel finished the quarter with the highest average primetime ratings in the history of cable news. The Fox News Channel closed the calendar year as the number one television network in weekday primetime, continuously topping all broadcast networks in total viewers since the very early months of 2020. Fox News was number one in election night coverage during primetime, beating all television networks and averaging 25% share of total viewers. While calendar 2020 ratings were record-breaking, we are now seeing the expected post-election audience pullback that we anticipated on this call last quarter, and which is consistent with prior election cycles. We fully expect that the overall news audience will normalize and our share of ratings will dominate. In fact, this trend is already beginning as we have seen substantial share gains versus our competition since the inauguration. As in the past, sorry, as in the past, we are confident that the strength and breadth of the Fox News media businesses positions us for sustained long-term growth. I'm pleased to announce that Fox News media CEO Suzanne Scott has extended her term with the company. Under her leadership, Fox News has expanded its reach with consumers and has diversified significantly to become a multi-platform media brand. I've been fortunate to work closely with Suzanne over the last several years, and I've seen in action her ability to seamlessly guide the newsroom as stories break, her openness to new ideas, and her ability to innovate new opportunities to grow our business. I am also happy with the programming changes that Suzanne is implementing, including Larry Kudlow's show on Fox Business Network that will premiere next week. We all welcome Larry to Fox. Turning to other areas of the company, our mix of assets saw viewers flock in even greater numbers to Fox Sports and Tubi post-election. Fox Sports leadership and live events demonstrates why it proudly and correctly claims to own the fall. Even with an atypical fall sports schedule that was crowded with out-of-season events that had, that had been postponed earlier in the year and included unexpected and sudden cancellations, Fox clocked nearly 170 billion minutes of live sports viewing in the fall, more than 50% above the next competing network. Our 27th season of the NFL demonstrated that Fox continues to be the preeminent broadcaster of America's most popular sport. With nearly 45 million viewers uh, tuning in to Fox for the NFC Championship game, we eclipsed last year's NFC Championship's audience that was broadcast during the later window. I want to congratulate the NFL for completing its season last Sunday. I know many of you on this call worried about the risks associated to Fox if the NFL season fell short. It's a testament to the leadership of Commissioner Goodell and the professionalism of both the NFL and the incredible team at Fox Sports that we were able to deliver and broadcast such a historic season. Crowd is not my favorite word or concept, but I am very proud of our team for this achievement. Elsewhere, the return of live sports boosted our sports wagering partnership, Fox Bet. After adding nearly 3 million players during the NFL season, Fox Bet Super 6 now has a user base in excess of 4.3 million players and continues to be the biggest free-to-play game of its kind in the country. We also continued our successful track record with non-sports Super 6 contests. For example, the Super 6 game covering the Georgia Senate runoff and a recently launched stock market challenge game and, and weekly quiz show as promoted on Fox and Friends enable us to fully engage non-sports fans who generally wouldn't interact with a wagering brand. A key differentiator for Fox Bet has been the cross-promotional power of all of Fox's assets to, to ignite the Fox Bet brand. In a similar fashion, we have mobilized the entire Fox portfolio 
to support and supercharge Tubi, which we acquired less than a year ago. This strategic acquisition, which is already a core asset for Fox Corporation, clearly merits some focused commentary. Tubi is an exciting growth engine for the company and a key strategic platform for not only our digital expansion, but also our broader reimagining of Fox's broadcast model for the future. In fact, I believe Tubi is an investment in what we internally call the broadening of broadcast, meaning the Fox network and Tubi combining seamlessly to create a modern network-inspired business. With Tubi as part of our portfolio, Fox broadens from being the leader in broadcast network television into a leader in linear and streaming ecosystems. Both Fox and Tubi deliver distinct value to our viewers, partners, and advertisers already. And we believe Tubi's technology and market approach coupled with Fox's unique positioning as a focused network first business make them even more impactful when operated and offered together. You know the broadcast network well and our marketplace differentiation. So I'll focus on the already meaningful momentum and results at Tubi and the significant sustainable growth that we envision ahead. Tubi has seen dramatic year-over-year increases across every key metric, and it continues to grow beyond even our best acquisition expectations. Over the first half of the year, we have seen yearly unique viewers more than triple, total view time grow by nearly 70%, and revenue more than double. In fact, Tubi's revenue for this past quarter alone broadly approximated Tubi's revenue for the entire fiscal year before we acquired the company. While some streaming services focus attention on metrics like signups or monthly active users, we think the most meaningful metric when measuring the performance of any AVOD service is total view time, or TVT, as it is viewership that has direct and proportional relationship to advertising inventory and revenue opportunities. It is this profile of Tubi that is driving digital advertising partners to engage with our audience. Looking ahead to our plans to continue to boost Tubi, let me give you a bit more color on our content, technology, and synergy strategies. Tubi's vast content library, by design, caters to a broad audience. We continue to strategically add to its offerings with marquee titles from Fox and nearly other programmer, every other programmer of note. The addition of the mass singer to Tubi provides a perfect example of the power of these assets combined. The show was a sensation when it launched on Fox. When we added the mass singer to Tubi, it added reach for advertisers delivered significant view time on the platform, and brought in advertisers seeking to be associated with the young, diverse, and complementary audience that Tubi adds to the Fox offering. Another important differentiator for Tubi is its technology. Tubi is constantly enhancing its ad technology to provide better data and results to digital advertisers. For example, Tubi recently introduced its advanced frequency management tool which reduces ad repetition. In an early study with a major insurance brand, this tool reduced over-frequency to the same viewers by more than 360%. Simply stated, rather than continuing to show the same ad to the same viewers, as is often the case across other AVOL platforms, Tubi's tool enabled this insurance company to advertise to nearly 100,000 more households within the same ad buy. These compelling results led the insurance brand to make a multi-million dollar ad commitment to Tubi throughout 2021. And the brand is also a Fox advertiser now as well. Expect more technology advancements and offerings in the months ahead. Tubi's tech stack in general will separate Tubi from lesser AVOD options for years to come. 
Tubi has also rapidly become a synergistic acquisition. We've had incredible success with advertisers who find their way to Tubi through existing relationships with other Fox brands. For instance, 50 advertisers who had not previously worked with Tubi chose to buy Tubi during their recent upfront season. By combining Tubi into our portfolio of advertisers, we reach brands that may have been unfamiliar with Tubi's unique and additive audience, nearly 50% of which doesn't have a pay TV subscription. We have a laser focus on growth and monetization at Tubi. And as we continue to invest in Tubi, we believe it will, will become the AVA platform of choice for viewers and digital advertisers alike and become a larger piece of the broader Fox Corporation business. Translating this financially, we expect Tubi revenues to more than double in the current fiscal year to exceed $300 million. And as we look out a few years, we envision Tubi becoming a billion dollar business and a core pillar of Fox. Tubi is a tremendous addition to our pre-existing portfolio of growing digital businesses, which we have built over time in a fiscally responsible manner. Over the first half of our fiscal year, our Fox News, sports, entertainment, and television stations, digital businesses, have attracted more than 330 million average monthly users, over a 30% increase from the comparable period in the prior year. These users spent more than 160 billion minutes consuming our digital content during this time, an increase of more than 70% from the first half of fiscal 2020. Through these digital destinations, coupled with Tubi and Credible, we have generated well over $650 million of digital revenue through the first half of our fiscal year, with approximately two-thirds representing digital advertising revenues. These rapidly growing platforms, along with our must-have linear television brands and market-expanding partnerships, are exceeding expectations. As a united portfolio, they are even stronger, with wide runways for the businesses to collaborate retaining existing viewers, harnessing new audiences, engaging consumers in new ways, and broadening the touch points users have with Fox. And now, Steve will take us through the details of the quarter. Thanks, Lachlan, and good morning. <clears throat> Highlighting the strength and momentum across our businesses, the company delivered double-digit growth in advertising revenues, along with underlying double-digit growth in affiliate revenues in our fiscal second quarter. Our total advertising revenues increased 14%, with this strong growth led by the Fox television stations, the inclusion of Tubi, and continued linear and digital strength at Fox News Media. As we previewed on our most recent earnings call, the growth at our television stations was driven by record political advertising revenues. When viewed across the entirety of our portfolio, we generated quarterly political advertising revenues of approximately $250 million, bringing our fiscal year to date to approximately $340 million. Total company affiliate revenues increased double digits on an, un on an underlying basis in the quarter. Once again, demonstrating the strength of our brands and our fo focused portfolio of leadership channels. During the quarter, we recorded an accrual for potential distribution credits due to cancelled college football games. While this credit was fully offset in our programming costs, on a reported basis, our total company affiliate revenue growth was 6%. This strength in our two most significant revenue streams drove total reported company revenues to $4.09 billion, up 8% over the comparative period in fiscal 2020. Quarterly adjusted EBITDA was $305 million, up $44 million over the comparative period in fiscal 20, due to the top line increases in revenues, partially offset by contractual annual escalators for our key sports franchises. Net income attributable to stockholders of $224 million, or 37 cents per share, was lower than the 300 million, or 48 cents per share, in the prior year quarter. This decrease was the result of higher gains recognized in other net in the prior year quarter 
most notably from the mark-to-market -market adjustments associated with the company's investments. Excluding this impact and other non-core items, adjusted EPS of 16 cents per share was up 6 cents compared to last year's 10 cents per share, primarily reflecting the growth in EBITDA. Turning to the performance of our operating segments for the quarter, where cable networks EBITDA of $571 million was up 3% on revenue growth of 1%. Cable advertising revenues increased 31%, with the record audiences and digital engagement at Fox News Media leading this growth. Underlying cable affiliate revenues increased mid-single digits. This growth was underpinned by rate increases, including double-digit pricing gains at Fox News Media, along with the moderation in the rate of industry subscriber erosion, which is currently trending at a little over 5%. As I mentioned earlier, during the quarter, there were a number of COVID-19 related cancellations of college football games. As a result, we have recorded an accrual for the potential credit of certain distribution fees. While this credit reduces our reported cable affiliate revenues, it is broadly offset by a corresponding reduction in rights costs. Cable other revenues decreased by 32%, primarily due to lower sports sub-licensing revenues, again as a result of the cancellation of certain college football games due to COVID-19. These lower sub-licensing revenues were also broadly offset by a corresponding reduction in rights costs. EBITDA at our cable segment increased by $15 million over the prior year period. This reflects the revenue growth that I just noted, partially offset by the shift of certain sports costs from our fiscal first quarter into our second quarter that we foreshadowed on our last call. The television segment reported revenue growth of 13%, with the EBITDA loss improving $29 million to $185 million. Continuing the consistently strong growth we have delivered since the establishment of Fox Corp, television affiliate revenues increased 23% in the quarter. This reflects double-digit increases for both our programming fees from non-owned station affiliates and direct retransmission revenues at our owned and operated stations. <clears throat> the growth in television advertising revenues was driven by the record political advertising I mentioned earlier coupled with the addition of revenues from the fast-growing Tubi. These factors, <clears throat> excuse me, these factors were partially offset in the segment by lower sports advertising revenues, including the impact of COVID-related cancellations of certain college football games, along with the postponement of key scripted entertainment programs. The EBITDA at our television segment increased 29 million over the prior year period. This reflects the revenue growth that I just noted as well as higher programming rights amortization at Fox Sports, primarily due to the contractual annual rights increases for our major sports franchises, including the NFL, and incremental costs due to the consolidation of Tubi. Partially offsetting these increases was lower programming rights amortization at Fox Entertainment due to the postponement of key script and entertainment programming as a result of COVID-19. Turning now to free cash flow, which we calculate as net cash provided by operating activities, less cash invested in property, cloud and equipment. In the quarter, we generated a free cash flow loss of $155 million, which is consistent with the seasonality of working capital in our business. Reflecting our continued confidence in the business and our balanced approach to capital allocation, today we announced a semi-annual dividend of 23 cents per share and continue to be active with our stock repurchase program. So far this fiscal year, we have deployed $450 million of capital to repurchase approximately 11.3 million Class A shares and 4.9 million Class B shares. Against our buyback authorization of $2 billion, we have now cumulatively repurchased just over $1 billion, representing approximately 5.4% of our total shares outstanding since the launch of the buyback program in November 2019. From a balance sheet perspective, we ended the quarter with $4.5 billion in cash and $7.9 billion in debt. Looking through to the second half of our fiscal year, it is worth reminding you of a few factors that will impact comparability with the prior year. Starting with sport, in the current March quarter, we will comp against last year's broadcast of Super Bowl 54 on Fox. However, we did enjoy the benefit of one additional week of the regular season, 
as well as a rotating divisional playoff game this January. Our plans also anticipate a timely start to the NASCAR and Major League Baseball seasons. However, as we have demonstrated in the past, we, would, we will adapt to any potential COVID-driven disruptions across our sports calendar. Meanwhile, from an entertainment perspective, due to COVID-19, the launch of our key scripted titles on the Fox network has shifted from the first half into the second half of our fiscal year, with completion of our full season still dependent on minimal future disruptions to production schedules. In terms of cash flow, we continue to anticipate relatively low working capital usage over the course of the full fiscal year, and as a result, the normal working capital deficit ex exhibited in this year's first half reverses in the second half of the year. As we've foreshadowed in the past, we continue to expect a higher level of capital expenditure in fiscal 21 to support the final phases of the build out of our technical broadcast facility in Arizona and the upgrade of some of our local station facilities. With the majority of our full year advertising revenue already earned in the first half, a very light slate of affiliate renewals and a working capital tailwind that will build on our already ample liquidity, we approach the second half of this fiscal year from a position of financial strength. Assuming the continuation of a constructive macroeconomic environment, we intend to continue to, to deploy capital towards share repurchases and are targeting an additional $550 million in our fiscal second half to reach $1 billion in total buyback volume this fiscal year. To sum this all up, the results of our first two fiscal quarters demonstrate the strength of our underlying business. This operating momentum, combined with the benefits of strong free cash flow and liquidity and moderate leverage, position us particularly well for the future. And with that, I will now turn the call back to Joe. Thank you, Steve. And now we'd be happy to take questions from the investment community. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to again emphasize that the functionality for the question and answer queue has recently changed. If you'd like to ask a question, please press 1 then 0 on your touchtone phone. You will hear a tone indicating you have been placed in queue. You may remove yourself from queue at any time by once again pressing the 1 then 0. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up the handset before pressing the numbers. It has been requested that you limit yourself to one question. Once again, if you have a question, please press 1 then 0 at this time. And one moment, please, for your first question. Your first question comes from the line of Ben Swinburne from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Good morning. Uh, my question is around Fox News. Obviously, there's been a lot written about the network and the business and the press of late. Um, and you guys just put up a really strong first half of the year. Can you talk a little bit about the strategy to maintain leadership at the network, um, particularly sort of post the last administration, post the inauguration? Um, and cord cutting is obviously out of everybody's control, but if you think about a mid-single-digit headwind on volume for that business, do you think you can grow cash flows over time? Um, I ask because at least when I look at the stock, it seems like the Fox News outlook is not being – reflected in the stock price. And I'm curious if you think that business can grow even with the sort of industry headwinds that we're all aware about. Thanks a lot. Hey, Ben, uh, it's Lachlan. Uh, thank you for the, for the question. Uh, you're right, a lot's being written about it and, and there'll be uh, a few more trees cut down. I think I'm uh, <laughs> writing about it uh, in, the, in, the, in the days and weeks uh, uh, to come. I, look, I, I think the Fundamental. Let me answer. There's two parts to your question, but let me, let me answer. I'll answer both parts, but let me answer the first part um, broadly and, and, and then specifically. So, look, in in the journalism business, um, the journalism trade, you know, you you you, you uh, what you what you do is you, you you work out your, your, what your market is and you, and you produce the the best product you can possibly produce um, for, that, for, for that target market, right? For, for your, your readers or, or, or your listeners or, or, or your viewers. Um, you know, at, at Fox News, the success of Fox News um, uh, throughout its entire history has been to, you know, provide the absolute best news and opinion uh, 
uh, for a market uh, that, we, that we believe is firmly um, center right. Um, and, and we don't pivot or change that, and we haven't pivoted or, or changed that throughout the history of Fox News. Uh, so we'll continue to provide you know, the best journalism with the best hosts, with the best analysis, uh, with the best opinion uh, going forward you know, as we have you know, throughout uh, past uh, news cycles. And we believe you know, uh, where we're targeted uh, to the center right is exactly where we should be targeted. Um, uh, it's where we've been. We, we don't need to go uh, uh, further uh, right. We don't believe America is, is further right. And, and we're obviously not going to, to, to pivot left. Um, all of our significant um, competitors are to the far left. Um, so we'll, we'll stick where we are, and, and, and we think that's, that, that's exactly right, and that's the best thing um, for, for the business and, and for our viewers. Um, and with that, we, we will see um, you know, a, a return uh, in our ratings dominance. As I said, we believe you know, the center right is, is where America's politics are, uh, and we expected, as we foreshadowed in, in the last call, um, our ratings to uh, 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 be tempered uh, after uh, you know this election uh, cycle, uh, and, and we were right. Um, we're down about 13% uh, in in ratings. If I go back to the uh, Trump Clinton election, uh, CNN was down uh, about 10%. Seventeen uh, percent, sorry, and CNN, uh, MSNBC, ten percent. So CNN, seventeen, uh, MSNBC, sorry, yes, that's right. See, uh, uh, CNN, seventeen, MSNBC, ten percent. And so, so we're right in in, in between uh, in in that metric. So this is a, this is a cycle that that we've seen before. It's a cycle we expected. Uh, we look forward to the, the in news uh, normalizing and. Uh, and uh, you know we, we will go on uh, from strength uh, to strength. The second part of your question, though, about um, about uh, you know really driving um, uh, uh, the business, uh, you know, continue to drive the business harder and continuing to generate cash. I think we look at it in two different ways. One is obviously the the pricing power um, of our um, you know affiliate revenue uh, remains you know relatively untapped. You know we think we. Uh, can continue to drive uh, pricing uh, for Fox News, um, you know, well ahead of uh, any sort of volume declines uh, in subscriber numbers. Um, uh, that's very uh, clear to us uh, looking forward. Uh, and I think the other part is, is that the new businesses that, that we're driving out of uh, Fox News media, um, uh, with Fox Nation, uh, Fox, the Fox Business Channel uh, is growing. Uh, uh, Fox, the Fox Digital, uh, all of the Fox Digital assets, FoxNews.com, uh, and uh, uh, radio, uh, Fox Radio, and now uh, we, we announced uh, this past quarter uh, the launch, the coming launch of Fox Weather. So when, when we look at Fox News Media, it really is a, a broader ecosystem of, of Fox News brands uh, that are all all growing and will all further contribute to, um, to, to growing um, EBITDA and cash going forward. Thanks, Ben. Operator, we could go to the next question. Your next question comes from the line of Jessica Reif Ehrlich from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I have a topic, multi-part topic on sports betting. Um, can you talk about the impact that sports betting had on the quarter at the local station level? And as the adoptions continue to grow state by state, um, how big do you think that pool, that advertising pool, can be? And then, can you give us um, any update on your options and what you're thinking about your options on Fox Bet and FanDuel? And finally, on NFL, um, how much is sports betting part of the conversation in your upcoming, you know, in your negotiations for the upcoming, for the next cycle? Thank you. So, uh, Jessica, just repeat the last, uh, the last one of the multiple. I, I got stuck on the fifth on question. <laughs> my one question on sports betting yeah. Um, yeah so on the NFL I mean uh, negotiations presumably are progressing hopefully well um, how much is sports betting part of the conversation given your unique assets um, great thank you Jessica uh, nice to hear your voice as well uh, so uh, first of all from, from a, uh, an advertising um, point of view uh 
uh, you know, this, our strongest category uh, in, in, the, um, uh, in the station group uh, is entertainment, um, you know, which is pacing up um, you know, 10% uh, uh, year on year. Uh, entertainment is really made up of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, two things. One, one is sort of streaming services. Uh, and, and, the, and the second is, is sports betting. So, so absolutely, uh, you know, the, the sort of wagering uh, uh, businesses, uh, both uh, locally in, in the states where wagering is legal, but also uh, in FanDuel and and um, and, uh, and DraftKings, are, is really uh, you know helping helping drive um, uh, local performance at the, at the station group uh, level. Uh, I don't have that sort of broken out as a as a uh, not just even as a category, but as a, as a as, you know, a subcategory in sports uh, wagering for you. But it is uh, in the in the very top uh, uh, growth uh, uh, tier for us. Um, uh, and and obviously, uh, so so we're, we're so we're enjoying the the growth of of, of, uh, of sports betting, sports wagering on, on multiple fronts. One from an advertising front at the at the at the local station level, uh, but also obviously participating in it with Fox Bet. And with our action, our, our option uh, in in FanDuel, you know, we are um, uh, you're really incredibly excited about uh, the opportunities uh, for Fox Bet, uh, the Super Six. Um, you know, we just talked before in these calls uh, and in person, the the Super Six funnel at the top of a uh, Fox Bet uh, is working, um, you know, very efficiently. Uh, we set ourselves a goal during this NFL season to reach over 4 million, you know, active uh, users. Uh, uh, well, I should say we set a goal. We ended up with a goal of 4 million. We started with a lower goal. We were tracking so well during the middle of the uh, uh, of the, uh, the football season that we increased the goal to to, to, uh, to actually 4.4 million uh, users, which we which we achieved uh, at the very end of the season. Um, and that 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 funnel is then is then successfully driving people. Uh, into um, Fox Bet uh, wagering, uh, where, where where it's licensed and legal, and we just launched uh, Michigan uh, January uh, 26, and it was um, you know a very successful launch um, for us uh, in in that state. Um, the uh, I think we've talked about it before, but the the FanDuel uh, option for our 18.5 percent is a 10-year option uh, beginning this summer. I think it's uh, June or July. Um, and that option is is uh, based on uh, you know fair market uh, value, uh, which uh, was set with the um, uh, flutter uh, acquisition of the fastball uh, stake in uh, FanDuel. Um, so you know uh, you know we 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 continue to be uh, proponents and, and fans of the dual brand strategy with Fox Bet alongside uh, with FanDuel uh, in these uh, markets. Uh, and we are, we are enjoying our, our partnership, our deep partnership, an important part, partnership uh, with Flutter. Um, as to the NFL, as this is a growing business, um, absolutely uh, the NFL understands that this is a, a business that, that's important to us and is important to you know, how we are able to uh, monetize um, our rights um, uh, deals uh, with them. I don't want to go into the detail of the NFL negotiations that um, um, we we continue uh, to be in, uh, we've been in for, for a while. Uh, we hope to bring those to a conclusion in, in the in the you know near to, to medium term. Um, uh, but the NFL you know is very aware of the importance of sports wagering. I'm sure to us. I'm sure I'm sure sure to others as well. Uh, thank you for the question, Jessica. Operator, we can go to the next question. Your next question comes from the line of Doug Mitchelson from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Oh, thanks so much. So, um, you know, question for Lachlan, but I guess partly a jump ball. I'm just curious, future profitability potential for Tubi. So that's the one question. The details are, you know, you talked about the usage up 100% and uh, advertising up uh, 70%. So uh, view time up 70%, revenue up more than 100%. So CPMs are obviously expanding. I'm just curious what the level of ad pricing is now relative to, say, broadcast prime time and, and, and where uh, you see upside there. And you talked about Tubi being the leading AVOD platform in the future. And I'm just curious your view on competitive differentiation. I think a lot of content that ends up on these AVOD services is not exclusive. And so, 
you know, what do you think will attract Tubi, uh, people to Tubi versus other AVOD platforms that are uh, out there? And then, and then lastly, just, you know, the margin structure when you hit that billion dollars plus of uh, ad revenue for Tubi would be uh, super interesting. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Doug. Uh, so uh, let me start, and, and, uh, and, and Steve can jump in um, if I've uh, forgotten any, any part of the question. Um, so, so, so with Tubi, and I'll, I'll answer your, your, your question honestly, but, but, uh, but I'm not sure when I look at um, competitors' SVOD services, whether you'd prefer us to say we'd, we'd be profitable early or we'd spend billions of dollars in investing in the, uh, in the business before we saw, before we saw break even. Um, because certainly our, our strategy is, is very different um, from our competitor's strategy. Um, we see the SVOD um, uh, uh, competitive set uh, as uh, uh, the potential to lose, um, you know, very many billions of dollars. Uh, we see it as very crowded. We see it as very hard to stand apart and differentiate, differentiate ourselves within, within SVOD. And that's why we've really chosen um, um, to embrace uh, AVOD as our direct-to-consumer uh, strategy. And we think we can do this um, uh, for really two reasons. Um, well, what, what, I'm going to say what, what we hope to achieve out of this, what we will achieve out of this, is, is really twofold. Um, uh, one and, and just to be very clear, because I spent um, uh, a lot of words uh, in, my, uh, in my preamble to this call, you know, talking about Tubi, but if, if, uh, you know, if, if the headline wasn't clear, it is that we expect to win in AVOD. We expect to win in AVOD and be the leading AVOD player uh, in this country. And secondly, we expect to be able to, to do it by reinvesting our profits but not, but not by losing billions of dollars uh, in uh, programming costs or, or other costs uh, in, in, the, uh, in the time it takes uh, to break even. Um, because of those two things, we, we will drive to be very aggressively. We, we will hit a billion dollars uh, in the medium term or, or near term uh, in revenue, uh, and the business will ultimately become a very profitable one uh, for us. Uh, the other elements of the question, I think, on, on sort of uh, uh, broadcast CPMs versus digital CPMs. Uh, digital CPMs are lower than broadcast; they're in the sort of the high high teens. Um, obviously, some of the uh, the tech stack allows us to, to, to drive that uh, to drive that further. And Steve, did I miss any other? Yeah. Part so, of them? so Doug, just in terms of um, the other question, in terms of margin development, as we get to that billion dollars, uh, we're not going to put a target out there, obviously, but I think the way you should think about it is, uh, in the near term, if you if you look back over the last six months, Tubi has actually been P&L neutral for us in the, um, from a bottom line perspective. We would expect that to change over the course of the second half as we continue to invest in the growth. And then over time, as we take our foot off the gas in terms of investing in growth, you see some pretty good um, conversion of revenue into bottom line margin as this business gets to scale. So. Um, and when you look at that revenue development in the, in the near term, Lockman's absolutely right in terms of where CPMs are, but we, where we see uh, a lot of headroom and where we've gotten a lot of uh, growth from in the initial phase has just been fill rates. And so and there's still plenty of headroom, headroom to take that further north. Operator, we can go to the next question. Your next question comes from the line of Robert Fishman from Moffat Nathanson. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Um, as you think about future negotiations with the major sports leagues, how do you think Fox is positioned with its portfolio of networks plus Tubi compared to the other media companies that look to be using a hybrid approach of linear networks and their SVOD services for uh, the top sports rights? And then on a related note, in light of uh, NBC Sports Network shutting down, can you discuss the company's outlook for Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports 2, and how you can use Flutter FanDuel partnership to possibly play a role there? Uh, sure. Um, thanks, thanks, Robert, for the question. So, uh, first of all, um, you know, we, we, we see uh, NBC Sports, um, the announcement of it, it's shutting down as, as you know, probably a, a net uh, positive um, for Fox Sports 1. Um, 
uh, you know, there's uh, less competition, I, I, I suppose, although we never saw them as our as our main competition. Um, you know, this uh, year, Fox Sports One beat both ESPN2 and, and NBCSN uh, for an entire year for the first time ever. So, we, you know, we feel, you know, very well uh, positioned. Obviously, uh, with, with uh, COVID and with some um, uh, sports uh, being less available, um, opinion uh, programming, um, which is obviously very reliable and, and you don't have the, uh, the high um, uh, rights costs, accounted for uh, 35% of the Fox Sports 1 uh, schedule and, and over 20% of, um, of viewing, um, which, is, uh, which I think is an important statistic because, you know, it shows that you can, you can uh, be compelling and, and, you, and you can win um, with a mix of both uh, live sports, but also with, with the, the sports analysis uh, and opinion that, that, that Fox Sports 1 uh, uh, has. Um, uh, you know, clearly having a uh, a, uh, uh, a breadth of uh, of sports uh, uh, platforms uh, will you know ultimately help uh, Fox Bet and 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 our partnership uh, also with with with, uh, with FanDuel. I'd also include in that obviously um, is the local stations and the amount of time and effort the local stations in, in their news and in their sports broadcasting you know also contribute. Uh, to promote to promoting um, Fox Bet and uh, and uh, engaging also with our partners uh, at FanDuel. Um, uh, the, the last part there in terms of about sort of sports uh, rights, I think the the thing that Fox has already, always had as part of its DNA is really a focus on the major sports rights as well. So it's um uh, it's obviously Major League Baseball, uh, uh, the NFL. Um, WWE, and so our, our focus on our, our bouquet of sports is really the big sports that are going to move the needle, and not so much in in uh, in smaller, um, uh, you know, still still great sports, but smaller sports for you know for other platforms. Operator, we have time for one more question. Okay, that question comes from the line of Alexia Quadrani from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, can you elaborate on the overall advertising market? You had very positive comments on Tubi and its ad outlook, and I assume most of that is coming from your investments and improvements you're making on the platform, but are you also seeing kind of a nice tailwind from an ad recovery? And then just to follow up, to circle back on some comments you made earlier on, um, on seeing some improvements in the uh, subscriber declines, I'm curious if you can give us some color if, there, if that slight improvement is coming from bigger contributions or from virtual DVDs or something else. Uh, sure. So first on, on the on the ad market, and you know, in the in the uh, in, in this last quarter, we're talking about you know obviously um, uh, the you know the the, the impact of, of political um, as we've discussed, uh, Alexia has just been being tremendous, you know. I'd be tempted to say we'll never see a political season so so big, but I don't think that's true. I think when you have a a Senate and, and, and a House so finely balanced, I, I think we're going to see uh, these records broken in in two years and and four years um, for sure. So um, you know the uh, uh, you know the the, the 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 you know the spending was 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 pretty staggering. Obviously, we had the the additional. Um, uh, bonus of sorts, uh, uh, you know, with with, uh, with the Atlanta the Atlanta station and, and and the Georgia runoff, which I think contributed to um, uh, I'm not sure if it's just the runoff, but but the, the Atlanta station alone contributed about 60 million dollars um, of of political uh, revenue uh, uh, in in itself. So so in the past quarter, obviously the the the, the, the story, the headline is all, all, all political. I think in the in the current quarter, obviously we have difficult comps. Uh, because of the Super Bowl um, and, and the um, us having had the, uh, the the Super Bowl uh, last year, which by the way rated 100 and, almost 102 million uh, uh, viewers, uh, it was a terrific Super Bowl uh, and, and a great uh, a great achievement. Um, uh, that uh, obviously, we, if you take that comp out, so we strip out uh, the uh, Super Bowl uh, revenue, I think we're, we're pacing. In the negative uh, single di mid single digits, um, maybe even a little bit better than that. Um, so mid single digits down five six percent uh, is where, where, where we would expect to end up 
uh, in, in, in local advertising uh, for the quarter. Um, uh, that's a tremendous improvement if we look through COVID from, from, uh, from a year ago, right? Every quarter, every month, uh, we've, we've, we've seen advertisers uh, uh, come back, uh, and now we are um, uh, stripping out uh, football and stripping out you know, political and everything else. Uh, we're about back to where, where yeah. we'd expect to be um, year on year. Of course, looking forward, um, the comps become much better because we will have been, we'll be comparing to, you know, the first quarter that, that was COVID uh, impacted uh, uh, versus, um, you know, now um, uh, being in a more normalized uh, advertising uh, environment. Uh, from a categories point of view, um, I think I, I mentioned uh, to in, in response to Jessica's question, you know, entertainment leads the categories. Um, uh, a home professional services uh, all, all strong. I should just mention the, on the on the on the flip side that automotive, uh, which is a, a obviously a very large category for us, uh, is uh, still down. Uh, but this is uh, primarily uh, driven, excuse the pun, by uh, uh, domestic uh, uh, manufacturers. Um, uh, in fact, foreign auto spending uh, is is roughly uh, flat. Um, and the second party questions. Yeah, okay. um, Alexia, just in terms of the improvement in sub declines, if I look where we were like six months ago, I think what we've seen is continued growth of the virtual MVT, MVPDs for sure. But we've also seen a bit more balance come in where we've actually seen the traditionals, their sub decline has moderated a touch. So coming from, from both sides of, of that equation. At this point, we are out of time. But if you have any further questions, please give me or Dan Carey a call. Thank you once again for joining today's call. Ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude your conference for today. Thank you for your participation and for using AT&T Teleconference. You may now disconnect.